Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint a winter scene with a fox with acrylics on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. So I am going to go ahead and get started right away. All the colors, materials are listed in the description of this video. This painting only used four colors, which is kind of nice. And so this is the color blue gray. It's a Liquitex Basics color. It doesn't come in that 48 pack that I, with, with the little tubes that I often use. So you can use that if, if you want to buy it separately, you're welcome to. Um, if you don't have blue gray, you can use the neutral gray value five. That's that gray color and just add a little bit of ultramarine blue into it to kind of make it a blue, bluish gray color. I also use titanium white, Mars black, and cadmium orange hue. So I will be using a three quarter flat wash brush to start out with, and I only have the three colors loaded. So the three colors except for orange are loaded on my palette. We won't need the orange until we are ready to paint the fox. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix a darker version of this blue gray. So I'm gonna make a shade of it by adding a little bit of black into it. We're going to paint the sky first, and the sky is a gradient blend of gray that goes down to a lighter gray towards the middle of the painting. Um, so we're just going to gradually add little bits of black into our blue gray. We don't want it to be too dark, so just a little bit at a time, just to darken it a couple shades darker. And we're gonna start at the top of our canvas, and we are going to paint left and right strokes across the canvas. So we'll be using this brush the whole time to paint our entire um, canvas. We're gonna go about two thirds of the way down with this. So I'm gonna bring this down a little bit further. I'm gonna have a little bit more black over here at the top. It needs to be slightly darker at the top and then it needs to kind of uh, blend to a lighter color as we approach the middle part of our painting. So we wanna keep going down left and right strokes a little bit more black in there. If that's if that black is streaking a little bit, that's okay. And then grabbing more of our blue gray and just bringing that down a little bit further. So I'm about a quarter of the way down the canvas and I'm gonna grab my titanium white without rinsing the brush. And we want to blend our titanium white up into our gray color. So this is going to allow our color to start getting lighter. So we're just painting a blended, simple gradient sky. And bringing that white down as I go further down the canvas, when I get to past the halfway point, I'm using mostly white at that point. So it's still going to show up a lighter gray color because I still have that blue gray color on my brush. But because I'm loading my brush in all white at this point, it should be lighter. So I just take that color and kind of blend it up into the sky. And so now we have a sky that has dark at the top and light at the bottom. I'm going to go down a little bit further with this sky so the sky is not in the, the horizon line. It's where the bottom of the sky is and where that land meets the sky. That is not in the center of the painting. It's a little bit lower than the center. So if I took my ruler and measured about four inches, that's about where that horizon line is. So if you're working on a different size canvas, you wanna just kind of estimate further than halfway down the canvas. And we're going to start painting our snow ground next. And I am going to utilize Mars Black and Titanium White for this. This is going to give us a different shade of gray to work with and to make that ground stand out from the sky. So I'm gonna start by making kind of a medium gray color. So I mixed white and black. Um, I'd say about three parts white to one part black. If it's too dark for you, add a little bit more white in that. And we're gonna start on the bottom of the 
painting. So this is the bottom of the ground area. We have kind of a shadowy area on the bottom and our ground gets much, much lighter as we work our way up to our horizon line. And when you're painting this snow, your strokes, we're using the, the same brush, the three quarter flat brush, you're using the full width of the brush, but we're doing kind of curved strokes this time. I'm gonna kind of create a hill, like a low lying hill in this lower left area. That's where our fox is going to be sitting on later. But for now, we're just kind of gently blending our snow color. I wiped my brush off and you can do the same. If you want to rinse it off, you can do that too. But we want to get the snow to be brighter really quickly here. So we don't want a lot of that darker gray up in this back area. So I am blending in pure white at this point. So I'm loading my brush with just the white and I'm still doing kind of these long sort of curved strokes that contour that gray hill that I created. Just kind of blending it up and then we're going to paint the rest of our snow area. So right here, just fill that in with white. We have a little bit of gray still left on our brush and that's okay. We can create some variations of color in the distance, but this is gonna go all the way up to our horizon line. And we, we don't have to have our horizon line be perfectly horizontal. So that edge up there is a little bit wavy and that's okay. Just gently blending that in. So our ground area is light at the top and a little dark and shadowy at the bottom. So next we have some low lying mountains in the distance. So this is gonna create some really pretty depth in our painting. So I'm loading my brush with the blue gray and titanium white, slightly watering it down. So about equal parts white and the blue gray. Water it down slightly so that it's thin. And then just take the tip of your brush and paint a very low lying mountain range above your horizon line. So this goes, the highest peak is maybe three quarters of an inch above that horizon line. If you want to do higher mountains, you're welcome to, but I just wanted these to be very subtle, simple mountains way in the distance and then paint it in. So it should stand out from your sky color. The bottom of the sky color is a very light blue gray color. This one should be a couple shades darker than that and it's standing out. If it's not standing out for you, you can add a little bit more the blue gray in it or if you want to use the Mars black to kind of create a different shade of gray in your mountains you're welcome to do that too and then just fill it in solid and then I did a second layer of mountain over that so the second layer is going to be a couple of shades darker I used more of the blue gray on my brush to paint this mountain and I painted that in front of it so that one overlaps it. Some of the peaks of those mountains can go above the one in the back, but this really creates some depth in our landscape painting. So we have mountains way in the distance. Next, go ahead and rinse your three quarter flat brush off and grab a number four round brush or similar size round brush if you're using different brushes. And we are going to paint our little moon. It could also be a sun. I'm gonna call it a moon. We're gonna paint our moon. And I'm gonna load some fresh titanium white onto our palette. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab our white on our brush. Upper right hand corner, just anywhere in the upper right. We're gonna paint a little white circle. Solid color, no blending or anything in it, just a little white circle. Okay, and then we're going to create some moon beams, kind of icy rings around our circle. So we want to wipe off a lot of that paint off our brush. So when we do this, you can kind of test it out to see to make sure that it's not going to do solid paint. It should be very dry brush style. In fact, this is dry brush style when we load the paint on our brush and then kind of wipe it off. We want to do this so that we can see the color below it. So we're not trying to paint over our sky. We're trying to create some translucent little beams around our moon. And we're just gonna kind of 
kind of spiral this out, goes outwards very far and the painting doesn't take up the entire sky, but it does go out pretty far. So in my paint, you can see how it's just running dry. It's still creating some marks on the canvas, but it's not super opaque at all. Just going back and kind of touching up my moon. Um, and we could always make that brighter later, later by adding like a second coat. I am going to grab my 12 bright brush for this. Um, if you don't have that particular brush, you can use any similar flat brush, or you can keep going with the round brush. But I'm basically going to use this brush to create some thicker, bigger circles around the moon. But again, dry brush, loading only small amounts of paint on that brush and wiping it off, testing it out on the canvas to make sure that it's going to come off very translucent. It doesn't have to be consistent. So you can see some of these uh, rings are a little bit brighter and that's okay. But for the most part, they should be very see-through. I'm just gonna bring this out a little bit further outwards. Again, I'm not going to fill up my whole sky, just kind of the upper right quadrant of that of the sky is where these beams are. Bring this a little bit further. And that upper left area is going to be a lot of tree branches, so I don't really need to add a lot in that area because it's going to be covered up by branches anyway. And I did a second coat over our moon. So next, we are going to start adding these trees. There are pine trees that are way in the distance that have snow. I am using my number four round brush and I am making a medium to dark gray. So about equal parts Mars black and titanium white. Twisting that brush to get that paint right on the tip. So I'm using a round brush to paint these pine trees. If you want to use a different brush, you are welcome to, like a little fan brush if you feel more comfortable with that. But I'm just going to do simple little pine trees. So with these pine trees, with that paint right there on the tip, start at the very, very top tip of the tree, and I'm just doing little tiny strokes. And I'm making each little row of branches, little kind of strokes that go in a diagonal direction but I'm moving my brush kind of in a zigzag motion, going from the left to the right, creating each little row of branches. So each little stroke, I am stroking down with that round brush. So there's my first little pine tree. And with each pine tree, I'm just gonna kind of vary my color a little bit. So this time around, I kind of added a little bit more white to the brush to make this one a little bit lighter. If you wanna do it all the same, you can. If you wanna do them all solid black without mixing white in them, you're welcome to do that. I'm doing the same, so starting at the top tip of that tree, little strokes, stroking down, forming the tree, kind of going in a zigzag direction. So let me show you a little bit more in detail about these pine trees. I'm gonna do another demo on the back of my canvas. So doing pine trees with a round brush. Start at the top, do your little top piece. And each little stroke, you're just doing little tiny strokes that stroke downwards. And you're making a conical shape. So you're just doing each row is stroking downwards, kind of curved downwards. And then you're just going back and forth, going in a zigzag motion. When you get towards the bottom, your strokes are a little bit longer, kind of forming that skirt of the tree. So I'll go ahead and turn this back over and do some more trees. What you can also do is some shrubbery bush plants in the background. You don't have to, but if you want to be more detailed, you can. So these, keep in mind, they're smaller, they're in the distance, so they're not super high trees. The tops of these trees may be a little bit higher than our mountain peaks, but not by much. And so right here, I just did a little bush piece. So I'm just kind of doing little strokes, kind of going up to form some kind of shrub 
next to that tree. And then on the left side of the painting, I'm going to do a little bit, um, a few taller trees, but not much taller than the other two trees. Again, the gray is kind of varied, so some of these slightly darker, some might be slightly lighter. That's just to give that dark color some variation. And after these trees dry, we will go back over with a layer of snow. So keep that in mind. You can look at the finished results and there is snow on those trees. So that's done in a later step. Um, so this tree ended up being a little bit bigger. So the top of that tree is a little bit higher than the other treetops and also a little bit lower to the lower down the ground. We are going to have this big branchy tree in the left so just kind of keep that in mind with the placement of your pine trees. So I wanted to do another pine tree but I wanted to make sure I'm leaving space for my tall tree with branches that's going to be painted on this. This tree is going to go not as far down as the one to the left of it, and the peak of that one was a little bit lower, so a little bit of a smaller tree. And then I'll do some small bushes to the right of it. When we get all the other objects in like the tree and the fox the big tree and the fox we can add more things when we're done with that but for now this is kind of how I want the placement to be and next I'm going to paint this big tree that's kind of right here and the branches are covering up a lot of the sky so for this tree I used a 12 bright brush that's that long flat brush over here it's a the width of those bristles are about a quarter inch wide, quarter to a half inch wide. And uh, before I do this, I'm going to draw the tree with chalk. So if you want to draw the tree with chalk too, this is helpful in getting the size, the placement right before we just start painting it in. If you want to just start painting it in, you're welcome to. But this tree, the the trunk is way back there, um, probably about the midpoint of our snow area, a little bit higher than the midpoint. And our trunk starts out a little bit wider at the bottom and then it goes very thin, very fast. Our tree starts branching out into about four main branches, kind of at the midpoint of the sky. And I just loosely branched the main branches out into letter Y's. You can have your branches kind of go around the moon if you want to do it that way. I didn't have any of my branches cover the moon. But when we get kind of the base of our tree drawn with the chalk, and we can always adjust this when we paint because the chalk will erase, we can go ahead and grab our 12 bright brush. And I'm using Mars Black right now. It helps to slightly water down your black just to let that paint flow a little bit better. But I'm using the tip of the brush to kind of outline the main trunk of it. And then I'll use the full width of that to paint it in. These bright brushes are nice because we can use the tip to create smaller strokes and then we can use the full width to create bigger strokes. And we can turn the brush to kind of make our stroke go thick and thin because our trunk right here is thick at the bottom and then it goes thin. So I kind of twist my brush to get that to go thinner. And just short strokes kind of slowly filling this in and when we get to the thinner branches we'll want to use the tip of the brush just the that vertical piece the very end of the bristles to get our thinner stroke and I'm just following what I drew with the chalk of course you don't have to go with your chalk lines if you want to adjust your branches as you go. You can if you want to create new branches or not paint branches where your chalk is. The side of the tree is, is a little bit kind of wavy. It's not a perfectly straight line so just kind of created a little bit of texture on the side of the trunk of the tree. And getting this branch. So you want to release the pressure when your branch goes to a point do that kind of quickly. So you do a little bit more pressure at first and then 
you release it, and when you release the pressure of the brush, your stroke gets very thin and goes to a point. If you have a different brush that you like to use for trees, so sometimes I demonstrate painting these kind of trees with a round brush, sometimes I demonstrate it with an angle brush, there's not really a rule what brush you're supposed to be using. It's kind of whatever you feel comfortable with and sometimes it depends on the style of tree you're going for. But for this tree, I decided to use the 12 Bright Brush you can see that the branches up high are a lot thinner so I'm making sure those lines are looser thinner and the branches that are kind of lower are a little bit thicker so you want to kind of vary your thick and thinness of the branch you can keep going with this I'm actually going to be painting some lighter color branches just because it's a snow tree and our branches might be frozen in some areas so without rinsing the brush I grabbed the white and I'm going to paint some lighter color branches. So these are going to turn light gray and some of those might actually grab some of the black so they might turn kind of a dark gray. Um, but just creating some different tints of those branches because our tree is snowy. It's in a snow scene. So some of our branches might be lighter color. Maybe the moon is reflecting them differently. So we're just going with our white and creating some more branches with our white. And these are not branches that I drew with the chalk. These are branches that I am just adding myself, just extending some of the main pieces. We will erase any leftover chalk lines after this tree dries. So you can use a soft, wet baby wipe or soft, wet paper towel or even a wet paintbrush to erase that chalk later. So next I am going, so assuming our pine trees are dry, if, if the black on the tree isn't dry, I would skip this step and come back to it. But if it's dry, we're going to go ahead and add the snow. So the snow is super easy to add to our pine trees. We're just basically going to do the exact same thing that we did with the dark, the black, and the gray. So with the round brush, we're going to add a layer of white. So we're going to just pretend like we're painting a white tree, but we're not going to cover all of the black. So you want to leave a lot of that black still showing through because we still want to see the shadow part of the tree. We don't want to paint the entire tree white. Just taking white on the tip of your four round brush add a layer of snow to the tree. So I always start at the top and just like I'm painting the tree, I'm just going to work in a left and right kind of zigzag direction, stroking down. So small angled strokes, stroking down, and that will create the snow on your tree. So you want to do that to each of your pine trees. You can do that to the bushes as well. And since there was nothing right here, I just created little random strokes of piled up snow. We also can have piled up snow on our tree branches. So wherever, wherever there's kind of an area where snow could settle, I'm just taking my white, still using the number four round brush and just painting little blobs of snow. You don't have to do that everywhere there's an opening but just some of the places. I feel like it would be way too busy if there was snow in every single open slot, but you could kind of decide how much you want to do. We will do splatter paint snow and a uh, very, very later kind of end of the painting after we get everything in, including the fox. So we'll do the little dots of snow in the sky with the toothbrush and also manually with the little round brush, but that's kind of the last step in this painting. 
I am going to do a shadow under our main tree. So if our moon's on the right, our shadow would be casting opposite. So our tree would be casting a shadow on the left. So when I do shadows, I kind of just do it watercolor style. I thin, thin down black and white. So kind of a medium gray, about equal parts black and white to a watercolor consistency. And I, I like to use that consistency because it makes it thin and not opaque. So it kind of makes it see through. We still see kind of the, the um, snow color underneath the shadow and it's thin. And the shadow goes to the left and off the canvas. Then I kind of touched up the base of the tree with black to really define that base of the tree. So very simple. And then I decided to do some highlights on the right side of the tree. So if this, you can skip this step if you feel like it's a little bit too advanced, but I just took the tip of the brush, loaded that in just the white, and very loosely painted some texture lines just on the right of the tree where that moon might be hitting it. And some of these branches over here that are going to the um, left, I painted the right side of it, gives that tree a little bit of form. So very simple highlighting. We don't have to go super advanced. So that is it for the landscape portion of this. You can leave this without the fox and just let it be a simple snow landscape scene. In this next part of the video, I'm going to show you how I drew the fox and painted the fox. And there is a traceable for this if you don't want to draw the fox, but I encourage you to try it. We're going to look at the finished version of this real quick to kind of get the size of the fox figured out. So the bottom of him, he's about three quarters from the bottom of the canvas. So there's the bottom edge. He's placed at about three quarters high. Of course, you could estimate this if you want to kind of change his placement. He doesn't, his ears go a little bit above the horizon line. So you can kind of see how tall he's going to be. He is about three and a half inches wide. And if you count his tail from the left part to his right tip of the tail, it's about four inches. So we're gonna go ahead and draw him in and we'll be using a pencil for this. And we're just gonna kind of pick a spot in the right, lower right area. And remember, he's about three quarter inches from the bottom of the canvas. Again, that can be estimated. I started out by drawing the right part. So this is his back because of the way that he's sitting. So this is his back. So the curve from the bottom, like his neck area curving around to where his tail is going to start. And this right part is his front because he's facing to the left. So it's kind of curved, but then it goes kind of straight where his leg is going to be. And then I kind of started the right part of his head there. So it kind of tangents to that piece and then goes up a little bit. We're gonna get his tail in. So his tail overlaps his entire body and it's going to the right. So it's sketching kind of a curved line. It goes up, big, big fluffy tail for this fox. And then it goes to a point. So you're making a big sort of teardrop shape. And the bottom of that is flat because he's sitting on the snow. And then we can kind of sketch his head. So he is looking to the left. So we can kind of get this um, head and kind of curve it to the left. We have the top part of his head, which is kind of a curve. And then his nose and snout kind of points up where his nose is. And then it curves again. And then we have the portion of the fox that's going to be white. I'm just gonna draw that in. We have the bottom part of his snout that's white and then it kind of curves and covers part of the body. So we can kind of divide up where the white and the orange is going to be. I have a finished example for you to look at, kind of help you with this drawing. Just kind of shape this. So the body, the left part of the body um, goes a little bit more to the left than where his nose is. 
and then his two little pointed ears. So yes, this is very sketch-like, but we can always adjust this when we paint it in. Kind of make our tail a little bit more fluffy. Kind of define our snout, little tiny circle for the nose. We can draw our eye in, even though this is likely going to be painted over, but it helps to kind of get the placement down. His mouth, a little simple curve for the mouth. The, um, you want to make sure, so this left part of him is further than where his mouth is. So when you have your drawing done, we're going to load our palette with orange and white. That's cadmium orange hue in titanium white. And we'll be using the number four round brush to paint him in. We'll also be using a little bit of black later on. So just the orange and the white for now. I'm going to start off by mixing orange and white together. So we're going to create kind of a cream color orange. What's tricky about this orange is it tends to be a see-through color. So adding white in it is going to help us with coverage, especially if the fox is overlapping anything dark. It should be overlapping a lighter area. Um, but if you have coverage issues where you're painting it and the orange is showing through, you can add a little bit of white in that and that helps. So I started off by painting the tail because that's fun and kind of gives us a little bit of confidence because it's an easy part. I'm just basically using my orange and white, just kind of letting those colors blend to create some color variation, but I'm doing contouring strokes. So I kind of outlined the shape of the tail and then filling it in in curved strokes that kind of form the shape. The tip of the tail is white, so I want to only paint the middle part of it and not the tip of it. If this color is showing up too light and creamy for you, that's okay. Because when this dries, we could go back with a second coat to make it more of a darker orange if you want it to be a darker orange. But the white is important to help us with coverage. So we have that base part of the tail in. So we want to kind of create some contrast here because our tail is overlapping the body area. So we, if we want that body area to look different from the tail area. We're going to need to use a different amount of orange to white uh, ratio. So I'm going to add more orange to my brush to start filling in this area. So we have kind of a circular area where his leg is and then it goes up to where the under part of his neck is. And the under part of the neck is going to be white. So this whole area, his back and kind of his side leg that is next to his tail is painted in using a little bit more orange than when we started with the tail. Our leg area over here is kind of a vertical line. I added a little bit more white to let that stand out. And then I just kind of blended that in with our darker orange. So we have our leg that's a little bit lighter, a little bit more white, so that stands out. I'm going to rinse all that orange off and I'm going to start painting white. So the white areas of our fox, I know I didn't paint all the orange areas yet, but I want to jump to the white right now. I did the tip of the tail, so kind of the same thing. You want to outline the shape of the tail and do kind of curved strokes, kind of contouring strokes to fill in that tail tip with the white. And there's pieces of white that kind of overlap our orange. And then I'm going to fill in the white that's kind of under his neck area. So it kind of curves around to the right. And then it goes under his snout, so the bottom part of his nose snout area that's white, so just a curved stroke, it kind of goes and overlaps part of that orange area. So that under part of his snout and the neck part, chest neck part is white. 
And then I'm going to go back to orange. So the part above his, above the white is going to be orange. The rest of his head, top part of his snout is all orange. So I'll just slowly start filling that in, short little strokes, kind of going in like a sketching, like a sketch style when you do the strokes. And you just kind of outline the shape of that and then fill it in in a curved direction. We do cover his eye, but we can always let that dry and then go back and paint the eye in later. And then we can do his ear. And then his other ear. So there's a little white part inside the ear that we can paint later. Next, I'm going to add some shading to the fox and I want to make a darker tint of this orange. So on your palette, mix a very, very tiny bit of black into your orange. It's going to make your orange just a little bit darker. And we're gonna use this darker orange to kind of add some shadowy areas of our fox. This is optional, so if you feel like this is a little bit too advanced or tricky, you can skip this step if you like the way your fox looks. You don't have to do the shading thing. So on the right part of his tail and kind of on the bottom, I just did some of those darker strokes of orange, especially on the bottom part of him. And then I did some darker shades of orange on the right part of his back area. So all along over here, a little bit darker. And then over here on the right, which is just behind his tail, a little bit darker. And I kind of curved that. That's where his back leg would be because of how he's sitting. And then on the right part of his head, I did a little bit darker shading. See how I did that just on the right part and just kind of dragged that color out a little bit. And just under his snout as well. And right over here, there's that curved piece for his back leg. And then part of his tail on the right. So we can use that to sort of outline some areas of the fox and just blend that in, kind of make some of the areas stand out a little bit better. Next, I'm going to go over my white areas with a second coat of paint. So I rinsed all that off and I'm gonna go back with my titanium white and just go back to the area under his nose and neck area, neck and chest area where that part is white. And then the tip of his tail, I did white as well. make sure that that white area is nice and bright kind of dragged some of that white over some of my orange and we can use the black to add some shading to the white so adding teeny tiny bit of black on the brush add some shading on the right part of his tail creates a little bit of texture in his tail and then we can do some detail work with our brush so we can do his nose with black so I loaded black right there on the tip of the brush made sure those bristles were all gathered to a point before I did that a little bit of black on the top tip of that muzzle snout area we got the black nose and then, so if this brush is too big for these fine details, you can also use a paint pen or a little tiny round brush, whatever your small round brush that you have on hand so that you can do these tiny details. One little curve for the mouth and then little tiny dots to the right of that, just on the white part. The little black dots are just on the white part. And then I kind of loosely outlined the ear and then grabbed that white and did that white part on the inner part of the ear. So we see the white part on the ear that's on the right side. Kind of touched up this furry area over here and kind of dragged that white down a little bit further. 
And then I'm going to really pinch this brush because I'm going to do the eye. The eye is so, so tiny. So we want to make sure our bristles are nice and gathered to a point. So I did a little curve line. And then I did a little tiny dot just under that. And then I outlined just slightly his front leg area right here, just on the right part of it. So we have a part of his leg and then this curve piece for his back leg, just loosely outlined that with the black so that it would stand out. And then added just a little bit more black where his tail is and on the bottom area of his tail actually mixed black with orange down there just to make that part on the bottom a little bit more shadowy. We are going to add shadow in the snow below our fox. If you want you can touch up some of your orange if you want some of the tail to be a little bit brighter or wherever you feel like you need to touch your fox up. Just adding a second coat of this orange kind of in a few different places. Next, we are going to add a shadow under our fox. So kind of the same way we did the shadow with the tree, we're gonna go ahead and mix pretty much the same shade of gray. So mix about equal parts, black and white together, and water it down to a thin, almost watercolor consistency. And just take your brush, I'm gonna make it just slightly darker because this part of our snow actually has a darker shadow. So I'm gonna make it a shade darker so it stands out. So added just a little bit more black to that brush. So just left and right strokes under your fox very loosely to create kind of an area that is more shadowy under him. And then we want to add some more snow texture kind of all throughout the landscape. So to do that, you wanna take your brush and load it in the titanium white. I'm just kind of making this brush kind of skid across the canvas, holding the brush kind of at an angle so the brushes, the bristles, I'm using more of the um, actual bristles and not just the tip of it. I'm just kind of letting that kind of glide and skid across the canvas, kind of holding it lightly so it's not a continuous line, it's kind of a, a line that is uneven and doesn't go completely opaque, but this adds some texture all throughout our landscape with some bright white snow. It shows up especially in our darker areas. So if you add some subtle little white pieces down in the darker shadowy area, it kind of makes it stand out a little bit better. Down here, I kind of elevated that snow just slightly uh, overlapping the bottom part of the fox's tail. And if you have any pencil marks, um, chalk marks, you can erase that when that's dry. So I had some chalk marks in the tree and I used a baby wipe to erase that. Another detail we can do is add a um, little highlight on his nose and a little dot on his eyes. So I did two little highlight dots on his eyes. This also works with a tooth toothpick. You can use that to create those tiny little dots. Another detail you can do is take Mars black and add that black just on the tip of the brush and create little branches kind of sticking out of the snow all throughout just add some more interest in our landscape. You can keep it plain and simple if you don't wanna add all these details. I just did two little branch-like things on each side of our tree, and then I did some smaller ones kind of scattered throughout the landscape. And since we have our everything kind of in, if you wanted to add another pine tree in there, you can. Um, there is one more thing we're gonna to do to this painting and we're gonna do the snow. So I'm using a toothbrush to splatter white paint 
kind of all throughout. It doesn't really show up on the brighter areas. because It's white on white, but it will show up on the darker areas very nicely. So you want to make your white slightly watered down, but not watery. You want to test it out first before you start splattering it on your painting so that you don't mess up. So get a good consistency of titanium white paint that splatters very fine little dots of snow all throughout your canvas painting. And then you can go in with your round brush and titanium white and you can make little dots of snow kind of wherever you want. So these are the larger dots of snow kind of all throughout our painting. And then one last little bit of snow texture, dry brush, kind of all throughout our landscape. And that is it. This is the conclusion of how to paint a snowy scene with a red fox. Hope you enjoy painting this with me too. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.